Lights, camera, action. In a studio where local filmmakers talk to other filmmakers about the inside world of film. Cut. That's not the script. F*** it. We'll fix it in post. Do you wonder how films are produced and what really goes on behind the scenes? Well, stand by filmmakers Kevin Mumphrey, Victoria V.A. Jones, and Carson Hype Ferguson explaining all the details. Right here on F*** It, we will fix it in post podcast. What's up, everybody? I'm Kevin Mumphrey, and I'm here with some of my colleagues at Good Co. Company, Victoria V.A. Jones, and Karsten, the hype man, Ferguson. All right, and today we have our first guest. So she is the founder and owner of Honeybee Productions, also a writer and producer. It is Miss Melissa Down smith How are you? Hey, hey, I'm good. We need a golf clap in there. <laughs> we'll add that in We'll add that in post. So let's just uh, start with a little information about you all. So what's got you into writing? Well, first off, thank you for having me. Um, my writing journey began, I would say, when I was a toddler. My dad used to read to me a lot, and so that kind of sparked my imagination. And um, then in school, um, once you learn how to write, it was just pretty much from there. My imagination kind of took off. I was the only child for about five years, so I just kind of wrote stories. I made them up, and... Um, I would say about middle school was when I started to uh, explore poetry, and I won my first contest in the eighth grade. That was pretty exciting. Um, and then I started to learn about, you know, Maya Angelou and Nikki Giovanni, and so I started reading them and fell in love even more. And I always kind of gravitated towards English in school. Okay. And so those were like my favorite subjects because there was always a writing project. and um, So, yeah, from there I ended up majoring in journalism and um, mass comm and undergrad. And I was in the Poetry Guild there. I was Poet Laureate for two years. Um, my poems were featured in the TSU Meter. Shout out to all my Tigers, TSU alumni. Shout out to the Tigers. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I um, have been writing poetry just for fun, just kind of for therapy. And um, I would say about two years ago, I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to publish, so um, let me just let me just try it. And um, I ended up self-publishing my first book, Heart for Sale, 70% Off. It is on Amazon, and it's on my website, melissapensitdown.com. And uh, it's basically just like, an open diary. Um, my experience of being a black girl in America, um, love and heartbreak, um, self identity, self confidence, or the lack thereof. Um, so yeah. So do you remember like the first story you wrote? The first story probably had to do about like my family vacation. I would say um, us going like to the beach. Or like Disney World, I remember kind of writing that out. Yeah, everybody so, loves Disney World. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's why they have all of our money. <laughs> and that's well, I went also, twice. Yeah, oh, my niece went for her birthday. I've never been to Disney World. Never? No. Like so, the Mickey Mouse as a ma- mascot, whatever. That yeah. thing scares me. I don't to like this money. day. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't scare me. I just want to be. I have like mentally a um, restraining order. I guess oh, okay. I, I understand. So I get. I keep. I'm like that with uh, Chucky, Chuck E. Cheese. I never mess with him. Oh, I thought you were talking about Charles Play. I, I did too. I did too. I ain't. I ain't been no friend to the end in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that used to scare me when I was younger, but like when you saw like the reboot of it, it's like so. Y'all need just burn this thing up or something. Like it's a it's a doll. Oh, I'm telling you what. I was like That's even even as an adult. You ain't messing with that doll. You ain't messing with that I doll. I know people who have that doll. Yeah. And yeah. then, like, in their car. Stick it on the front of their cars. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> October <laughs> October coming up. You're going to see a lot True. of that going on. I'm True. good. I'm good. I actually had a My Buddy doll. Yeah. Um, sales went down right after that. After <laughs> yeah. Went straight to Goodwill. Down. <laughs> straight to Goodwill. So, when you write, like, poetry in your stories, like, so, like, how many times are you rewriting before you just know you're finished? My process is kind of interesting. 
Um, sometimes I kind of meditate on like an emotion uh, for a while, or sometimes it just kind of flows out of me. Um, I will say since I had been writing all that time and then decided to publish in 2018, I did go back and read a lot of poems and kind of edit some of those because, you know, you're a younger writer and there's easier ways to say what you're trying to um, get across that's, you know, simpler and kind of hits better. So um, I feel like most of the time when I write, it's just like one and done, but then I'll go back and read and then edit later down the road. Now, does reading poetry from other authors, does that help you in your writing as well? Absolutely. Um, it kind of helps me kind of identify, okay, they kind of have the same type of personality as me, the same type of uh, writing style. Also kind of helped me hone my style um, as well. So, yeah. So do you remember when you started sharing, like, your poetry and your stories to, like, family and friends? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, my dad's side, um, most of them are here in Tennessee. And whenever we get together, it's, like, story time. We laugh. We joke. And um, we would always do, like, these family talent shows. And so I would share poetry. And, um, you know, I was just doing it as my talent but discovered that, you know, it was being received well. Um, so I would be asked to write poems for birthday celebrations and um, anniversaries. And so I was like, oh, okay, I may be kind of good, you know. Oh, she your family not going to lie to you. She saves some relationships. Look, look at her. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, man, I got to put something on this card. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you're a Hallmark writer for for the family. I mean, slick, yeah. I mean, I, I need to go back and charge uh, yeah, that works some out. interest. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been doing that for... 20 years plus. I'm going to tell you right now. Free. If you try to go back and get some money from that family, you ain't going to see them to the next family reunion. <laughs> or, or until you make it. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Or oh, until you and make that, it. And that, when that happens, you're going to have some brand new cousins. Brand new. Oh, for sure. I'm trying from to places tell you. you've never heard of, like right. Belize. Uh, like the deepest. Oh, no. The, no the, the best accurate. one is, yeah, I'm related to your third cousin on your dead side, married to your. He didn't tell you about me? Right. right. Removed. Right. Removed <laughs> twice, you know. Yeah. Now I'm back in the family somehow. Yeah. Oh, for real? <laughs> somehow. <I> just kind of. <laughs> right. I'm going to tell you right now about them third and fourth cousins. I got one right now. I only seen him one time in my life, and he still owe me an action figure. <laughs> An action figure? Yeah, yeah. We was, we was playing in the yard when I lived in Alabama, and uh, he messed up my action figure. It was like the best one I had. Oh, uh, you still bitter about the action Yo, figure? Oh, man. Yo, I heard, Damn. man. He said that was so. That's therapy. Trash. It's trash. Therapy, get that. It was That's trash. A, nah, therapy ain't going to help that. That's a, uh, <laughs> What's going to help that is he get these hands. That's what's going to help that. Hey, cuz, <laughs> hey, man, I've been waiting on you. Right. <laughs> hey, so, we're six. Well, listen, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. So since you write scripts, you must have a big imagination, right? <laughs> yeah. So you daydream a lot. Yeah, I started to as I've gotten older, yeah. So it's when you were younger, weird. you didn't do it? If I did, I didn't recognize it as daydreaming. Because gotcha. as an only child, like, you just... You well, know. I understand that because yeah. I, I have older siblings, but they weren't around. So technically, kind of, I was like the only child. Mm -hmm. So I would daydream a lot. Okay. So I understand the process of doing that. Yeah. So I get that. That's yeah. why I had to ask you that. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. I, I And it's weird to be in your 30s now and say that you daydream. But it's true. Like, a lot of my, you know, stories or narratives will come to me when I'm just, like, chilling and just, like, Dazed out. So. Honestly, I but, think we do it more when we're older. But it's it, if you had a job you don't like. Is it is it weird <laughs> though? Is it weird to like actually use your imagination? No. I mean, I think that's I think most is. I think more people do it. They just don't admit it. No, it, people think that you're crazy when you admit it. That's why they don't. That's why people don't say it. But a lot of people do it. I talk to myself. I, I, I'm like, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> look what you did. This the time. worse the traffic is, the more I end up talking to myself. <laughs> Because I know the car in front of me doesn't hear me, but I'm really talking to the car in front of me. Well, yeah, that's yeah. a that's an outburst. That's kind of different. Everybody does it. I'm talking about literally like sitting right. by yourself, talking to yourself. Now I go through through lines or or some 
just like lines by myself because the way I may he- think of it in my head and then I say it, go, oh, that don't work. Yeah. I gotta try that. So I do that. But it, it's 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 crazy because literally the the short films that I've wrote, like I literally I, it's I talk to myself, but at the same time I'm it's in my head. So I just write it down as I'm seeing it. It's like you can literally see it. We're the same I can, person. I can see it. Like it's right there. So even yeah. like with the dialogue, it's like that with you all as well. Yeah, yeah you can like see I, it. I, I, that's exactly how mine. I like see everything and then I write it all out. See, I see pictures. I don't see dialogue. Mm, okay. So in my mind, everything's a silent film. Oh, okay. I'm just like, yo, can y'all say something? That's that's, that's very, funny. Very, very very artistic. It's <laughs> very I, artistic. I didn't want it to be that artistic, but it's yeah. like yo, if y'all could talk, this would make this easier for me. So I was I always know the picture. It's like I don't know what I, what y'all gonna say. Mm. So they're just talking, but it's like I can't hear them. But uh-huh. it's like, that's kind of dope though. Still photos put together, right? Yeah, the story. I get that. Yeah, especially when I was working, working like any other job, and I'm just kind of. Dozing off, or whatever. Right. I just see the pictures in my head. I'm like, okay, I can make a story about that. Right. Now, if I can just get y'all to talk, <laughs> I can finish this a lot quicker. Because dialogue is a nightmare for me. Like I never, like it. It's never like that. It. I can. It's kind of like I close my eyes and I'm daydreaming, and I can see the whole. That's why I like. I don't need a storyboard. I don't need none of that. Even if you give me a script, and I read it like once, I don't need to storyboard it out. It's just there. I can see it. So like, in, like you see it, like the whole details. Yeah, everything. I can see yeah, all of it. Yeah, I can see it. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me too. <laughs> I don't get it. I, I'm glad that you get it. Yeah. Because I, I try to tell people this and they just think I'm really crazy. And I mean, I don't think most people like think in detail or like I think people think not think in the uh, basics. Yeah. They don't see things. And, oh, I didn't mean that as a dig. Oh, 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 oh man. Like, people thinking basics. I didn't, well, I didn't mean that. I'm very analytical, so I like to know all the details and so, everything. And know yeah, people don't tend to, because you do, like, I always know you have an eye. You'll see things that I don't see. Right. So, but I know me, I think I very, I see it as is. Okay. So you see the corners, you I see the you. shapes, mm-hmm. you see the colors. And all it's, of that. It's detailed. And it's it's really cra- like sometimes it does does it does it like scare you sometimes? Um, I would say no because I feel like uh, whenever it's like downloaded to me like that, that it's like a divine um, gotcha. deposit. Gotcha. So it's not even um, like I'm a vessel, but it's not even like really coming from me. So gotcha. I, I just think uh, it's yeah, dope. I get you know? it. it is dope. Yeah. But sometimes <laughs> it's it it like it gets it real. I get it real close, and I'm just like, yeah, why? Like I, it's kind of like, oh my goodness! Like how, how did I see that? And then you because see it put God out. God-given purpose. That's yeah, why. you're right. Mm-hmm. It is. I, I believe the same thing. Like God has given me these visions, mm-hmm. but it's like sometimes it's like really scary on how it, it's really right there, and I yeah. just, it just comes out. So I think a painter or like a sculpture also sees like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it has something to do with that too, because I can, I can't draw the best. Like I got a cousin that can really draw and paint. But God. I can I can draw, so I I understand it. Mm-hmm. I used to draw That's nothing. That's why I like but. the storyboards too, though, because I like to see, like the vision of right. of the creator, and then I I'm also artistically inclined. I'll say so. I like to draw and stuff like yeah. that. Oh, it, oh, straight stick figures for me. <laughs> <laughs> I used to try to draw when I was younger, but oh, <laughs> I was making whole comic books with stick figures. <laughs> but there's a market for that. Right, I'm sure they put uh, on a shirt. Yeah, stick, actually, you're right. Stick no. figures, and then put a little smirky comment on it, and that's the shirt that somebody gonna buy. Yep. The whole me. Right. Yup. Yeah, actually, right. Exactly. <laughs> got my mind wandering at this point because, uh, I mean, that's why they got us all at home. <laughs> they, had that, uh, they had that stick figure action joint going on uh, in the early 2000s too. Like, uh, I mean, they did like they redid the Matrix with stick figures. And they had this one crazy karate scene with a dude like had nunchucks, and they took pieces from Enter the Dragon. Yeah, it was pretty elaborate. And I'm talking about like it wasn't even like short. It was it was pretty long. full feature. He's talking about like 10, 20 minutes of stick figures fighting. He's just watching it like, oh man, look I think at I've seen that before. Look at him. People look at watch him other people play video games, so I believe you. Uh-huh. 
True. I watch other people play video games. I can't do it. Not 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 a whole lot. Not a whole lot. It's like most of the time they're playing the game and they're just talking crazy about like something that's going on. Huh. It's just like almost like background noise. You like you're seeing them play the game. But or you're really if, listening to them talk. Yeah, you just listen to them talk. A lot of a lot of cats be doing that now. Jesus. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Well, back Make to your a lot of money too. Oh God, yes. Yeah. Back to your detailed eye. Now, does that help you when, when you kind of transition from poetry to writing scripts? Yeah, absolutely. Because, um, like, even when I'm writing poetry, like, I do kind of see the emotion as a visual thing, too. Um, but when it comes to script, like, all of that is, you know, encompasses the whole, the emotion, the scenery, you know, the personalities of the people involved, the location, all of that is you know, it's in the details. So, and I'm excited and like, um, inquisitive about all of that and like writing it and see how it develops and all of that. Now. So like going to the world of script writing, was this more of like a natural progression from poetry or was this something that motivated you to do it? Um, I mean, I, I used to write scripts when I was younger. I didn't necessarily know what I was doing, but because, like you said, that imagination, I used to write scripts. And so um, to me, I guess because writing is so much of my personality, they were kind of, it was an easy transition, but I knew that they were two separate things, if that makes sense. So it wasn't a def- difficult transition? I wouldn't say difficult, but it's definitely, you know, you know, you have to know the technical aspects of it and know the differences between, you know, poetry, prose, and script writing and the format and all of that. So the project that we all work together was your short well, secrets. Uh, what motivates you to write to write that? Uh, well, I guess collaborating with you, wonderful people. Um, us oh, wanting to. Oh, <laughs> oh, um, Hercules, Hercules. Yeah, we'll we'll add some hand claps on that too. Yeah, I wanted to put some work out in these streets and represent Nashville and just coming up with ideas on um, kind of what kind of stories we wanted to tell. And, um, you know, we just had an idea, okay, secret would be some kind of crime, short mystery um, thing. And it just kind of from there, um, my mind, again, the imagination is just kind of, the doors just flew open. Like, if I wanted to tell a, a crime story, kind of what would it look like? And All right, and for this, you all can kind of chime in on it. For people who don't know, like, the process of shooting a short film, can you kind of talk about the process of finding the actors, the location, just kind of setting up for that day to shoot? Uh, hire somebody else to do it. <laughs> if you got the funds. Yeah. Um, trade good food to get somebody else to do it. Yeah, we're talking like <laughs> broke, bare back. Like, hey, you can borrow some stuff. I'm like, hey, I, you, somebody might need a bathroom know, it, cleaned it, up. Tr- trade is a good thing. You know, I trade all the time, but uh, you know, for as a job and for as creating is two different things. So I'd rather us hit the ground running, doing it ourselves than trying to get somebody else to do something that you're trying to create type deal. So then you have that issue of you're explaining your vision to somebody else. Right. And it's better for not even, not even the director It's better for the writer to pick the talent anyways, Mm -hmm. because the writer knows what they want. The director is there to basically direct, but the writer knows the character knows uh the mood so having the writer pick the the talent is is better all right miss ryan so what was your process on finding your talent for your film yeah to piggyback on miss va um seeing the characters in my head kind of knowing um their personalities their motivation kind of had an idea of what i was looking for um to come through the screen and so um you know you make a casting call and you write down the specifics of what you want. And then, you know, working with you guys, you kind of already had a database of people that you already, you know, use and that um, you could refer. And then I um, 
you know, send it out and just let it, let the chips fall. And yeah, it was dope. It was it was a good chip though because the two actors were actually good for the role. Yeah. So. Yeah. It worked out. Right. right. I you know, and it was kind of surprising too because um, I would say Noel, um, he really wasn't I guess didn't fit all of the criteria but he came in and kind of just flipped it and made it his own so I thought that was pretty cool that he had a unique spin to the character okay now the day of shooting were you nervous anxious eager remember how you felt that day I would say all of the above like it was exciting it's my first film um I mean I already felt like it was dope just getting that far you know starting something um and then the process of, like, seeing it come to life. So I was already excited about it. Um, I was nervous because, like I said, it's my first film. And I wanted everybody to, you know, especially the actors, feel comfortable and, um, you know, feel feel like they are these characters. And so um, I wouldn't say anxious, but I would say excited and nervous. Listen, if you're not nervous at every single project, then there's something wrong. I don't mm-hmm. care how successful you get. If every single project you don't have some, some sort of nerve, mm-hmm. then there's a problem. I think it kind of gets you prepared. Because if you walk, I can't imagine walking to a set thinking, everything's going to work the way I think it's going to right, work. Right, right. <laughs> because that never, it, I don't think I've ever seen that happen. It's never happened. I think the last, the closest, I, ironically, the closest I've gotten to that feeling was my project and I walked in and we had no actress. <laughs> so fun times. Oh yeah. Oh, Improv. very fun times. Improv. Oh, that that's an interesting story in itself for another date. But oh, we could probably talk about it on the next podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so when you saw the finished product, when edited and everything done, you saw it for the first time. Do you remember how you felt? Uh, um, I was excited Um, happy I was like yes I completed something Um, and it was dope I thought like you know the script was executed well the actors um, seemed believable Um, I loved the you know the the music in the background, like the anxiety that built up with the story. Yeah, Kim did an excellent yes, job. Yes, she did. At editing that. She did. Putting everything in. And claps mm-hmm. for Kim. Yes. Which we'll Shout add. out to Kim. Black girl magic. <laughs> but yeah, like it was a cliffhanger. And um, like even the, the shooting location, I think was perfect. So now we get off from Secrets and then during everything that's going on in 2020, you did a film through iPhone called Karma. So how did that project come about? Yeah, so that was one of those that was uh, downloaded, like given to me in a dream. Um, I had seen, um, you know, a challenge to do a short film on cell phone. And um, like a couple of days before, and I was just like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool, you know. Um, especially during quarantine, you know, that would be fun to do. But, you know, who has time? Nobody's getting together. It's quarantine, whatever. So I go to sleep, and um, I literally see the entire film. Um, I wake up, like, literally. Um, I wake up the next day, and I hadn't written it down yet, but I um, I hit up my boy, uh, Richard. And um, I know he's been wanting to get into films, and I was just like, hey, you know, you know, if we were to shoot, like, a one-minute film about quarantine, you know, would you be interested on a cell phone? And he was like, tell me more. And so I just told – I basically told him the whole dream that I just had. And I was just like, you know, it's crazy because it's, like, about quarantine and, like, who's going to come shoot this, you know. And we only – and the deadline was, like, that Sunday. So we only had, like, four days to shoot it. And he was like, hey, I'm down. Like, send me the scripts. Um, Let me know, you know, where we're shooting. And so, like, literally within a day, I wrote the script. I did the storyboard. um, I did the casting call. But I had already characters. I already had people in my mind that I felt like would, you know, would pick up the phone and say they would want to be in it. And 
I mean, from there, it's just like once I said I was going to make this film, it just like, it took off. It wanted to get made. It wanted, like literally wanted to get made. And we shot it in one day and then he edited it the next day. And then we submitted it and it's just crazy how that whole thing happened. Good music. Good music. Thank oh you. yeah, I like. Yeah. I love the whole vibe of it. Now, you. Um, something you don't really see much of now. Your film was a silent film, mm-hmm. so like, was that in the dream? Dream? That Absolutely. Was? Like, which I was like, man, this is perfect. I don't even have to write. You know, I wrote. Um, and when I say script, I kind of just wrote like the scenes out. But yeah, like uh, it literally was a silent film because it was quarantine, and then the whole film, I pretty much had a mask on the whole time, and so I was like, this is dope. Um, and I'll tell you the premise behind it. Basically, um, the week before, or just in conversation with my friend, you know, we were talking about, like, what girl, what are you doing during quarantine, you know? And um, we were talking about how, you know, you're bored, you know, you're you're texting. You're not drunk texting, but you're quarantine texting. So that's like, oh, yeah. you're bored, you know? <laughs> so there's always this one person who, you know, We'll always be four. around. Oh, yeah. I've got about four of those persons. Sucker, yeah. unfortunately. And, and I was like, girl, you text? And she was like, yeah. Maybe and I was can. like, I'm trying not to. <laughs> and so that was basically the theme of it. Like, you one know. Of, one of them, uh, what are you doing, text? Right. One of, what are you doing? <laughs> but the karma is, the one time you want them to be there, they're not there. And so this is what this was. They're an essential employee. <laughs> oh, this is a waste. And that sounds. that sounds like personal experience no <laughs> not at all. we're moving on now so. <laughs> i'm confused anyway good as you all should be so <laughs> for those in the audience who do not know kevin is an essential employee <laughs> everywhere in the world everywhere literally world. i'd be oh, waiting on folks to go hey man can you take a few days off yes <laughs> please lord <laughs> Like it was getting so bad. I was like, I had one job. I was like, look, y'all can fire me if y'all want. Dang. If, if, oh, no, we love you here. Stop. <laughs> like, hate me. Like, uh, I, man, I just show up. I don't even care anymore. Man, nah, don't be like that. Don't be like that. Oh, uh, uh, after hey, about. Employed during quarantine. After yes. May, I was like, yo, my pay doesn't say essential. Oh, but yeah. y'all keep telling me. That was most of all the essential workers, though. Oh, yeah. That's the one thing I have in common with all of y'all. I'm like, look, we're going to get this essential pay eventually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so oh for real? I was hoping. I, I guess that was the corona check. I Where guess. is it at? I, I don't know. I'm still looking for it myself. Like it, it's, in, in, it's in a lucky pot somewhere. Because I am, too. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for this as well. Like, can I get some essential disc, discounts? If I could have gotten that. Like, I could have gone to, like, Walmart and got discounts on some stuff. Yeah, you ain't getting no essential discounts, man. Nothing. And yeah. Walmart actually gave their pl- their uh, employees extra money. Hey, don't don't plug them. They're going to have to pay <laughs> for that. <laughs> it's not a plug. It's me more like hint, 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 hint. Hey, uh, y'all hiring? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> something, but back to uh, shooting with the iPhones. It's uh, So, how many iPhones did you all use for shooting? I used one, iPhone 9. Oh, that was just one iPhone. One iPhone. So um, the process of like shooting with, would you say kind of smoother? When I tell you engine, I can't even say it correctly, but that word, using your uh, creativity. (laughs) I mean, literally, like uh, we didn't even have like a real um, tripod. We just kind of threw something together and um, literally shot it on Richard's iPhone and he edited everything in post. So um, but because I was so clear about the shots that I wanted, he was able to like film everything like exactly how I saw it in my dream. And then um, he edited it. Now, do you think uh, like shooting, shooting a film through iPhone, do you think that's something you would look into doing more of in the future? Absolutely. I mean, I think that um, because of quarantine, it kind of just opened up a whole new a genre of way of filming really you can't plug it remember (laughs) so i just think that's you know that may be the future i don't know it is so you see a future in i i his iphone videography as well yeah Yeah, i I mean mean, i don't like iphones but 
<laughs> I, I'll use the video uh, some stuff. You know Wait, what I'm saying? A few years ago, I thought that would have been a great because I saw um, at a film festival and it was just like little kids and they were shooting their films with iPhones. Mm. Now, like, okay, that's good for kids to start shooting. Oh no, no, no! But these these Not things are looking all. good now. Yeah, it, it works. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Well, and that was a challenge too, is to you know see if you could shoot it on the iPhone. And like your shots wouldn't shake you. Like honestly, if I didn't know, mm-hmm. if you didn't tell me it was shot on an iPhone, I wouldn't have known it was shot on an iPhone. When I say he literally made a makeshift tripod and you know rigged that thing to where that phone was not moving, like it works. Miracles, miracles happen every day. I'm telling you. That like you said, in steady hands. <laughs> True. That you know what I'm too. saying? Now that, that's the also, film wanted to be made. That's also a gift <laughs> right. from God because we all don't have that. Oh, I got steady hands. Hey. That, that's another gift God gave that, me. You know what I'm saying? That's another podcast. Okay? <laughs> I've, I've held On stuff, another level. And I thought I was steady, and then I was looking at it like, ooh, when did all this happen? Well, you know, sometimes it's okay for the camera to shake, but not to look like an earthquake. Right. Yeah. Uh, like the, it wouldn't even like a little shake. It would be more, it would look like a joke. Almost like somebody pulled you out of nowhere. No, well, you know, when I first started, I didn't have a, a study study uh, stabilizer or anything. So I had to figure out how to use my hands with the camera. And it just, that's just how I, I d- did it. Now it's You just have a easy. surgeon's hands. Oh, mm-hmm. definitely. Definitely not a surgeon's hands. Hey, sur- surgeon's got to be steady. Listen, if I get in that operating room and somebody's open, you're falling out on the table. <laughs> right next to them. No, so, right? so you have their hands, but you don't have... The rest of it yeah. is... Yeah. The, yeah. the rest of you is a regular person. <laughs> <laughs> like when I say hands, I specifically mean hands. Hey, man. So, yeah. so you want to talk about the, uh, f- the festivals and other places you've shown your projects in? Yeah, um, so... I guess starting last year, I started submitting secret to, um, you know, random film festivals. I was like, hey, first film, why not? Let's just shoot your shot. And then um, was so excited about, like, how karma just kind of just made its way into the universe. I was like, you know what, I'm going to submit this one, too. And, um, you know, they both were selected um, this year, which is so crazy. Because, like I said, these are my first two films ever. And um, particularly Karma was like a last-minute thing. Um, But Secret, it was selected in July um, in the Indie X Film Festival as a uh, finalist for Best Crime Short. And um, and then Karma was selected twice for um, Indie Film Fest in L.A. in June. And then in July for Best Mobile Short. So it's just congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Thank it, you. Add the claps right there. <laughs> <laughs> no it's tips. surreal. It's crazy. So um I uh have you been writing since quarantine at all? I have. Um, like I was telling you earlier, I've got like six scripts that I've got to finish, um, that I've kind of been writing uh back and forth. And a few of them I've had over the years just um the stories have been developing, but now I'm wanting to turn them into scripts. So I would say about um, it's half and half. Three are like films and then three are like uh, pilots. Now, with everything going on in the world now, has it made it easier for you to focus on writing or like you almost feel like you're forcing it or how is the process for you? I think it's it's kind of both ways. I think having to like sit down and like, like she said, you have time to daydream. So that allows me to kind of tap into that and write. But then at the same time, you're in the house all day. So a lot of times I just want to get out and be in nature. And so um, I find myself, once I come back in, I'm like, I don't I don't want to focus on that right now because I'm so, so on a high of being outside and being in nature and being out of the house. So I feel like it's a balance. Um, you know, you don't want to be – all work with everything that's going on, but at the same time, this is, you have a lot of time to be productive. So, well, I personally would like to thank you for taking time to talk to us today. 
Thank you. And for definitely. I, I think I speak to all of us when I say we're proud of your personal growth as long as we've known you. Yes. Thank you. And I hope. appreciate you guys so much. She good. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are kind of like the, um, you know, the 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 mother and the usher who pushes the child up to like do the Easter speech. Well, like that is a very <laughs> inner. Thank you. Uh, seriously. You know what I'm saying? You know. She's absolutely right. Y'all, y'all figured out my personality quickly and um I, I tend to do that with a lot of people, but yeah, yeah. Kevin's good at that. I'm gonna y'all, push you, I'm gonna push you out the nest. Seriously. You're gonna fly. You gonna like, fly. Even if you don't want fly to. Fly or die. You're gonna, gonna do it one way or the other. <laughs> so I'm I'm grateful. My I'm thing grateful. is you know, never say never. You never know. Right. So it's kind of like you were talking about, uh putting your stuff in film festivals. Mm-hmm. You never know. And you just you won. It's crazy. And so. I always say, like, I'm not, like, too much afraid of failing at something. And that's what most people don't ever start. Mm-hmm. Like, I go into something going, I'm probably going to mess this up. Mm-hmm. And once you mess up, you know, okay, I can't do that again. Right. You just learn from your failures. Yeah. And your first project is just being put in the film festival. So you may have been a lot crazy. more ahead than you, than you realized. Right. To be the best of the best, you have to fail because... If yeah. You fail, you're gonna know everything after that. Yeah. So in order for me to know everything, I gotta fail. Failure is my best friend. And the thing about when you mess up, it's usually when you've gotten good at it, it's a funny story years later. Right. right. Yeah. So and I like telling for funny stories. So I just I kinda rush to failure. Well, I don't know about that funny part, but I got a bunch <laughs> of them stories. <laughs> It's not fun, but, you know. It's not fun at the moment. Right, right. I put the fun in failure. (laughs) You're like, what? But you learn from it. Right. It's it's cool. Especially the worse it is. (laughs) The more you learn. Mm -hmm. I'll never hire her again. Yeah. Stay humble. Exactly. Well, I think that is all the time we have here. Um, That will be a wrap.